Hello guys and welcome back to Raising Reef. In this video I'm going to tell you how a small adjustment to my calcium reactor without the follow-up test 24 hours later to see what I'd done and how my alkalinity stood resulted in the death of one of my corals. <laughs> So those of you that have a calcium reactor or dose to your, your tanks with alkalinity and calcium, you know that if you make an adjustment to your piece of equipment that doses into your tank, you should really be then testing 24 hours later to see what difference is made. I neglected to do this on one occasion last week. Uh, I noticed that my DKH usually sits at around 9 and it had dropped down to about seven or so. So I increased the flow rate through the reactor and the drip rate coming out went from about one drip a second to two drips a second, roughly. Um, I didn't have to touch the pH controller. That was already set enough so that it would uh, keep and maintain the pH at the level that I wanted. And ideally, I would then test 24 hours later to see what happened. If it had increased a little bit, a lot, and I can dial it back or adjust it as, as need be. I neglected to do that test. Uh, I've been extremely busy lately and it kind of got away from me. I forgot and I didn't do the test until two days later. Unfortunately, the tweak that I made to the reactor was a little bit more than I anticipated and my alkalinity had jumped from about seven right up to about 9.6. This is an increase of over one DKH a day and we would normally advise somebody if they're going to increase their DKH, they would do it by 0.5 per day. So this is more than double what you would recommend. And the result in this was the death in one of my corals. Uh, I think I was lucky to get away with just one of them dying with, a, with such a swing. Uh, every other coral seemed to be unaffected and I removed this coral because it completely bleached within a matter of hours and, and it would completely strip the skeleton and was completely dead. I pulled it out, uh, I removed a few other slight burnt tips from one of the other aquaporas that was next to it, and over the next few days that coral continued to recede. Um, I then removed a few more pieces and it continued to recede a bit more, so this morning I removed the whole colony and I've plonked it down on the bottom and it's we're going to see how it goes. If it continues to recede uh, to the point where there's not much left, I will just remove it from the tank. If it starts to grow back or it stops receding, then I may mount it back where the other coral was before. The big coral at the back, uh, the Aquapora, it, it was in two sections. There was two frags that grew into one, well, that's all one big colony together. And by removing one of those, I still have one colony that seems to be completely unaffected at the moment, but we will monitor the situation. When it comes to corals, a mistake you make today can take as much as two weeks to take effect in the tank. So I'm not out of the woods yet by any means, but I thought I would share with you this story and try to drive home the importance of follow-up tests once you make adjustments to your equipment. It can affect us all. I've been in the reefing hobby for getting on for 12 years now and I still make some mistakes every now and again. Life gets in the way. You can't give the tank the attention it deserves all of the time. Um, but you hope that the little that you can give it is enough to keep it going until you can lavish more attention on it. Sometimes we pay the price and this is that. Uh, I lost a coral and potentially left, lost another half a colony. But if that is the extent of the damage, then I feel that I've got away quite lightly. I do have a frag of this on the frag rack, which was waiting to go over into the new system once that was up and running as a sort of test frag to see how it gets on. It's now the only piece of this coral that I have left and it seems to be completely unaffected in the position that it's in um, by the alkalinity swing and seems to be doing just fine. So I may have to use that to grow it back out again in order to take a frag to put over into the new system. I didn't want to risk the whole colony because obviously setting up a new tank can be risky when you're moving over sensitive corals such as this. Um, and this could well happen straight away to all of the corals if you add them to it and they just don't like the new system uh, because it's too new, it hasn't matured and it isn't offering them everything they need. My other solution to that may be to link the new tank to the old tank. So essentially what it would be like is like doubling the water volume of this tank 
but maintaining all of the biological and fi uh, filtration and everything the same as it is. It's just going to have an extra volume that's going to help to seed the reef rock that I've got in there. And I'm toying with the idea of doing that just to make a more stable system. At least I know that all of the stuff that's going on within this system will just be extended over to the other one. So that's something I'm playing around with at the moment, but at the moment I just wanted to try and drive home the need to test your tank, uh, especially when you've made adjustments to any of the equipment that is going to be adding uh, stuff to the tank that could, if, if adjusted too quickly, result in the loss of corals. So I hope you learned a little something about um, the need to test your tank and that even after such a long period in the hobby you can still run into issues and, and make mistakes. We're only human at the end of the day. So if you like this video hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos from me. So take it easy guys and I'll see you in the next video.